Hello, everyone, and welcome to our March Office Hours webinar. We are thrilled you've taken the time to join us today. My name is Stacy Hatch, and I am a product marketing manager here at GuideCX. We have a wonderful team on with us today to talk to you more about our recently released Recipe Builder, which is a native iPaaS solution that allows you to build custom integrations within GuideCX. And I got to tell you guys, this has been a big initiative for our team because we recognize that your team has unique workflows and also has applications that are unique to your tech stack. And you need integrations uh, that integrate seamlessly and match those unique workflows. So we're excited to really be the first in the space to offer this embedded integrations experience within our product that requires relatively no coding experience or technical experience to really get started and start seeing an impact in your organizations. Uh, we'll dive deeper into all of that, but wanna give a couple minutes for our team here on the call to introduce themselves to you. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Haliwa. I'm the Director of Product Management for our Wisdom Pillar here at GuideCX. And when we talk about wisdom, what we're thinking about is primarily intelligent automation. And even though we try to deliver that in a variety of ways, the main way today in which we try to help with that automation is automation across systems. So we're excited to show you how we can do that with all the systems you've looked at for us to integrate with in the past and some new ones that Hamani and Jeff will be showing you today. Hi, I'm Hamani Pa'oi. Um, I've been with Guide CX for just a little over a year. I'm happy to be here to talk more about how you can create uh, custom integrations from scratch. And hi, my name is Jeff Johnson. I've been with GuideCX for about two years, and I'm going to talk about how you can extend the functionality of GuideCX itself using Recipe Builder. Thanks, guys. Uh, this really is an awesome team, and they've kind of touched on this already. Uh, but for today's agenda, Chris is going to be kicking us off with this high-level overview of Recipe Builder. Uh, so what's included? And then we have three key use cases we're going to walk through with you guys, starting with pre-built integrations that GuideCX has created and published that you can then take and customize with just like a few tweaks and changes to better meet your workflows. And then Hamani is going to come in and talk about how you can build custom recipes completely from scratch to any new system or application uh, that you desire to connect with. And then finally, Jeff will be talking about adjusting those uh, workflows within GuideCX and your process automation. And as we go along, I'm sure there will be questions. We invite you to leave those in the Q&A tab of the Zoom. And as we go through, we'll make sure to answer all of your questions. Let's get started, guys. Chris, kick it off. Share. So as we introduce what Recipe Builder is, it's nice to start with just this one general example that really what we're trying to do is to help people work better together. And one of the places where that, that sometimes breaks down is when one team needs to go through a handoff to another. And I think we probably have all experienced that uh, delay and that anxiety around waiting after sales has done a great job in the CRM, they've closed a, a winning deal and they're now handing that off over to the implementation team. Too often in that situation, um, you're going through a bunch of messages, a bunch of manual emails and things like that, just saying, hey, here is the background and here's what needs to be created. And in that space that you're coordinating internally, the customer is thinking to themselves, when am I going to see the value out of the thing that I've already spent money on? And so in the past, we've begun to help with that, with other types of, of basic integrations where you were reliant on really just looking into code, dealing with um, specialized developers that knew these systems and trying to either just take the default setup that we could give you or having to go off and wait a long time to customize that. And what's really nice about Recipe Builder is you get all the value of that faster handoff without that trade-off of having to go and do custom things with uh, specialized developers. Instead, you could expand even beyond just creating a project that goes along with that one opportunity to also send custom fields in both directions or to find out what their sentiment was or what they had actually bought or even auto-define assignments to make sure 
that you're not just creating the shell of a project, but a fully populated project based on all the information that you are already storing in other systems. And so as we go through and think about the different types of options you have now with Recipe Builder, there is really a wide spectrum of possibilities that can fit the different skills of everybody on this webinar. Some of us might be really just looking for a plug and play type of experience where you just want to be able to click on a logo, you want to throw in your login credentials and be off to the races. That's still totally possible through Recipe Builder today because we're not just giving you a blank canvas, but we're get populating this Recipe Builder with all of the most frequent types of use cases that we've already observed in the past. So as you take those use cases and those recipes that we're publishing out to you to give you a head start, if you want, you can go in and more than just turn it on and authenticate it, you could begin to change the logic around. You could say, I want it to trigger at a different frequency, or I want it to take a different type of action. And the beautiful thing about it is that it's all self-serve, all drag and drop, no code, and uh, you're able to really get this done in, in a matter of a few minutes. But what's even more exciting is that if you want to start moving into Jeff and Hamani's type of examples that they'll be showing you in a moment, you could also connect with systems that we've never connected with before. And the sky's the limit. There's already over a thousand connectors available for you in Recipe Builder. And this is where uh, in the past, I would have had to tell you that NetSuite or Zendesk, for example, or ConnectWise would need to wait weeks or months for my engineers to come around and, and finish off that for you in our roadmap. No longer. You can get started with that today. Um, and then even if you find a really edge case of a system that has never built a connector inside of our recipe builder, uh, you can still take advantage of their APIs and still um, make sure that the other part of Guide CX responding to those triggers um, is all uh, unified in this one place. So let's get into a live example now. So here we are. Um, and if you've never seen this screen before, the activation is very easy. Simply reach out to your CSM and you can be one of the already 70 providers that have opted in to this new feature. And uh, in a matter of minutes, they'll get back to you. And all you have to do is come and navigate to this marketplace section. And in the past, you might've only seen six systems in the marketplace page, but now you'll see thousands. So let's take uh, advantage of one of the most popular of those in Salesforce and do a quick search for the types of recipes that GuideCX suggests to us here. So I'll look for what GuideCX suggests around Salesforce. And I can see here that one of the more popular ones over here is around creating those projects. So I'll select that, spin it up, and I can see an example of the preview logic. Makes sense. Uh, when I win a deal, I want to look at the templates maybe even take a look at the, the main contacts there, and I wanna create the project. So with that, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. I'm gonna move forward by saying I wanna use this recipe. I can put it anywhere I wanna organize it. In this case, I'll just put it in a special folder for this webinar and save. So as it's preparing that, I'm gonna jump over to an example that's a little bit farther along for the sake of time. And often what will happen is it'll ask you to just do your quick connection to Salesforce. So you would see a pop-up window where you throw in your username and password and you'd be ready to go. Um, when you're ready to then start the recipe, it'll be listening for this trigger of new deals being won. So I'll start that. And while that's going, I'll go and I'll actually mark a deal um, as having recently been won. So we've had this opportunity with a, a cycling company called Stravello. They've gone through all the processes and we're finally we're at the finish line where negotiations are, negotiations are complete. And I'll mark this as a deal that we have won. So even though it does sometimes take a few seconds, maybe even a few minutes for these signals to, to process across systems, uh, it's significantly faster than manually going and communicating across teams. So I would expect that by the time I come to this next tab where I'm looking at my projects pane, um, that it's showing me that things have been executing and I can see exactly which recipes are running the most and how often. And I can see, okay, yeah, there it is. A project has come across from Salesforce um, and let's make sure that it's right for the, uh, for the right account. Cool, I, I see that it's for Stravello. But one of the things that we wanna really build on that we've done in the past and that we've only been able to start improving now 
is not even needing to have to populate which template should go in here or which project manager should be assigned. And so as we think about how we want to customize this and make this fully automated, um, that's where we can go in and take advantage of these new customization options. So specifically, what I'd recommend you focus on the, the very first as you're spinning up these recipes is to not just focus on a single object like the opportunity object, but take advantage of the power of having multiple object types from Salesforce all in the same recipe. So I could pull the company details from the account. I could pull the main point of contact from the, um, from the contact objects. I could figure out which templates I want to activate according to which SKUs they had purchased, or I could even send custom data in both directions that might be totally unique to you uh, with these custom field options. And so it's this type of customization that I assure you, you all can do. And so to prove that, I'm going to hand the time over to Hamani to show how we took a system that we had never connected with before and were able to pull off some really powerful use cases. So over to you, Hamani. All right, thank you, Chris. Here, let me share my screen here. Okay, um, so thanks, thanks again, Chris. Uh, so now you've heard from Chris about the purpose of us moving to the recipe builder, also how instrumental that is in creating these integrations that you might have not had the ability to do before. Um, what I would like to do is touch more on the connector side and specifically the value of the community in building out your recipes um, when you're starting from scratch. So uh, each integration, if we break it down, you know, with its anatomy, um, it can be broken down into two main parts. First, you need a connection. And this creates a way for you to ingest the data from your system into the recipe builder. And then second is the recipe itself, which will be the workflow or set of instructions, blueprint um, that you create for the integration to follow. Uh, if you recall uh, the recipe for Salesforce that Chris had shown, um, you can see that um, that almost linear path of actions that the integration followed. Um, so I'm gonna get into the recipe builder really quick. And uh, let's say for, for example, I'm setting up a new integration and I'm looking to build an integration with Jira. Um, I would first need to establish a connection to Jira um, to make that connection in the recipe builder. And I'm just in my, inside my folder, my project folder for Jira. I can come to create over here on the right-hand side and click on connection. That will uh, display a list of all of the connectors that are available, the pre-built connectors um, that you can use to in your recipe building. Uh, so if I'm searching for Jira, I'll just type it in here, and then I can see a few different options, but I'll select Jira because this is Jira Cloud. And then I can connect um, any of, uh, I can connect to this or authenticate it by just filling in these, these prompts here um, and then hit connect. That would allow me then to use that in my recipes as I build it out. That allows me to use any of the available triggers and actions that are associated with that connector um, then, that I can then use in my, my process. Let's say I don't see a connector here when I search for it under the connections. Uh, that's where the community comes into play. So if I go to the community on this left-hand side, there's this custom connector section. This, uh, the community uh, really consists of connectors and recipes that other platform users have created. So I can go to the community tab. Um, I can search for, uh, for a connector to see if the community has built it and then install it into my own instance. So let me, uh, let's say I have an example where I'm wanting to connect to Calendly for an integration. I'll go ahead and uh, type that in. And then I can see that the community has uh, created a connector for it. When I select that, uh, select that connector, I'm able to see a few, few different things that'll help me in deciding if this is going to be helpful or not. Um, so I can see the triggers which is how you would get the data um, from your system. And then also the actions that I can build on top of that. If this looks like a good fit 
um, for me, for my process. I would then come to install. It would take me to another prompt where I can release it into my own recipe builder instance. Um, and then when I go back to that connection screen to, uh, while I'm building out my recipes, uh, it'll be available there for me to connect. So the recipe builder is a valuable tool um, in creating custom integrations um, that you might have not had a way to create before. You can be pretty creative with the ways that you use it. And it opens up the doors to the possibilities, more possibilities than a normal integration process would allow. Um, and without all the development resources you would usually need to get them up and running. So to demonstrate the power of the recipe builder, I wanted to show you an integration that someone on the guide CX side made using chat GPT. And you may, may have played with chat GPT. Um, it's the latest craze. Uh, it's a powerful tool that, uh, that can do pretty much anything, uh, in my opinion, um, from debugging your code to giving you dance moves that should win a, a dance battle with aliens. Um, that's a real question that I've seen on it and, and real answers that came from chat GPT. Uh, but uh, so the integration that was built is pretty neat. Um, and what it allows you to do is create instructions in a guide CX task using chat GPT. So I have a test project here that I'll, I'll show you. Uh, you can see that there is one task here that is different from the rest of them. And that's that it has a keyword that, that says generate in the naming convention. That's what's, uh, what I'm triggering off of or what I'm, what I'm able to uh, run the integration off of to know which tasks to change that task, the task instructions for. If I open this up, you'll see what's in the task instructions right now is generating a task, uh, generate task instructions for connecting Salesforce with Guide CX. So this, this looks more like something that you would put into a chat GPT prompt um, rather than you know, what you would want to send to your customers. And this just gives instructions to chat GPT to, uh, to tell them, hey, feed me some instructions that will be, better, uh, be a better use for my uh, users or my customers. Um, so what, what we're looking for in this demonstration is uh, are three things. First, what the integration should do is strip this name, uh, this name so that generate is no longer in the naming convention. Then it will input the task instructions. And then under the notes section, it should post a note um, that says that it was generated by uh, OpenAI. Okay, so let me make sure that it's running here really quick. I'm gonna come to the recipes and then I'll show you what, what this looks like as well. Um, so chat GPT, the, the chat GPT uh, integration, it's only five steps and, and there's no coding involved with it. Um, I think our, the, the person who had created it said it took them maybe about three hours to put it together. So I'm going to start this recipe. And then I'm going to make a change to the task because that's what it's triggering off of. I'll change the dependency. And then I'm going to wait just a few seconds for it to make that change. So I'll refresh here and you can see that the task here um, just says connect Salesforce now. So it stripped generate off of the naming convention. And then it gave me the task instructions all listed here. And then under the notes, you can see the task was created using OpenAI. So hopefully what, what this did is, is stress the point that this is a wide open world for you to explore integrations um, and it will give you more capabilities than you've ever had in the past with other platforms. Um, and also maybe you have some kooky, some crazy ideas that maybe you know would help your organization but nobody believed you so you didn't get any resources for it. Uh, well, those can be built out now and you can have your own type of proof, proof of concept um, that you can show your team. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll turn some time over to uh, to Jeff. Money, that's awesome. Let me ask you a quick question. Sure. I think you've showed that it's relatively easy to create these custom integrations, 
but what kind of support is available to anyone who is looking for a little bit of help? Yeah, uh, so we have a, uh, so we have us guides uh, or I guess integration managers uh, who can help assist with, with integrations. We can answer questions. We have a great support team um, that, that can help answer questions. Um, and yeah, we're, they're available 24 hours a day. So uh, they, they're great, they're world-class, um, really good uh, at, at helping you with what you would need. Awesome. There's also a comment uh, that was saying they weren't seeing the option for the community under Marketplace. Um, so I would just say, if you have not yet uh, reached out to your CSM, to install recipe builder you will need to do that because the recipe builder will replace the current experience that you're used to seeing with a few tiles in that integrations marketplace so if you're not seeing community that should be a clue in to again reach out to the csm team at guide uh, another question is this recorded will an email be sent Yes, absolutely. Uh, we'll be sending out an email to anyone who registered or was on the call so that you can, yes, Sage, watch that chat GPT demo again. Uh, that's definitely one we're excited about in, in our team. There was uh, another Chris, one about yeah. uh, if there was additional cost as you're reaching out to your CSMs. You know, we have three tiers, uh, professional, premium, and enterprise. If you're in the premium or enterprise tiers, there's no additional cost, um, but uh, it might be a, a justification for upgrading to those top two tiers. Perfect. Uh, here's another question from Kelly. Uh, can it automate template assignment based on opportunity product? Yes, I'm so glad you asked about that. That's actually my favorite way to customize uh, some of those default recipes that we're pushing out. So what you'll notice is that if you copy over one of our default recipes from the community, there will be a placeholder where we're trying to do that, but we can only actually go through with it all the way. If you tell us which thing to look at, um, inside of your systems to trigger uh, those templates. But yeah, whether it's template population or project manager assignment, those are all things that are very common that people do and we highly recommend it. Uh, perfect. Here's one other question. Can you touch on the possibility of automating a new hire process, taking data from HRIS and automatically creating a user account in Active Directory and then assigning that user to a specific group, et cetera. Totally. Uh, Dale Jenkins is our HR leader here at Guide CX. He did that same type of thing uh, as we were looking at our paying payment system and our HR or information system. So yeah, as long as Guide CX is somewhere in the recipe and you have a project based on that internal employee onboarding, um, you can definitely do that. Awesome. Uh, we definitely say the sky's the limit. Like we really do feel like this unlocks full flexibility for you to be able to work, you know, guide CX into whatever workflow your organization is using and really then become, you know, more efficient and optimize those processes. Thanks for all the great questions, guys. Uh, Jeff, if you'd like to continue and everyone on the call, continue dropping your, uh, your questions in that Q and A or chat. All right, great. Well, thank you, Stacey. So we've uh, talked um, so far about how you can integrate Guide CX with various third-party products such as Salesforce, Calendly, and so forth. I'm going to show you a few examples of how you can extend the capabilities of Guide CX itself. So I'll just uh, talk about um, how you can implement inter-template dependencies. Uh, you can send notes from Guide CX to Slack, and how you can use uh, Google Forms and other form products to customize the onboarding experience for your customer. So if you think about inter-template dependencies, imagine that you have two templates on your project and you have uh, uh, on the second template, you have a task over here. It says set up customer training. And the training team cannot actually do that until the other team that's working on the project configures a server for the customer. So these two templates or these two tasks are on separate templates. And um, traditionally, you can only um, have dependencies or on the same template. So, but what you can do with Recipe Builder is you can define a recipe that says, well, when this task here, configure the server is marked done, then we're going to make the customer training task go live. 
And it, what that means is once that task goes live, the task assignee is going to get a task assignment email. They're going to know, okay, it's ready to start working on. You can go ahead and set up the customer training. And the way we do that, the recipe is when you mark, a user is going to mark the configure server um, task done. Well, the recipe will detect that because then it can detect, um, it can trigger off of changes to tasks. It can trigger when notes are added to a project. It can trigger, trigger when... Um, Things about a project are updated, such as the status or the um, planned end date. So here it's going to detect that a task has been updated, determine which task it was, and then implement the intertemplate dependency by marking another task on the second template as done. So what I've done here is um, the task that I really want to go live is set up customer training. So I've added a task right above it that I call a gate task. And so the setup customer training is dependent on this gate task. So all we have to do in the recipe is say, well, when the configure server task is marked done, go mark this gate task done and boom, the task right below it is gonna go live. We know it's gone live because um, it's um, dependency icon has a little green dot on it next to it uh, as opposed to the red dot. So now instead of uh, your project manager having to go across the templates and remember which tasks um, need to be um, uh, marked done when a certain task or a different template is marked done. You don't have to re remember any of that um, immediately. You can have implement these inter template dependencies. And you could set up any number of these dependencies um, for your project with just one recipe. And so uh, quite simple. So another example would be uh, oh, notes. Sorry to interrupt you. There just yes. is a question from Andrea. Yeah, yeah. Also a shout out from Sage uh, that she says, so glad to see that you can trigger other templates and have dependencies based off of other templates in the project. So yay for that. Do a cheers. And then Andrea is asking, in this example, uh, will the dates for the dependent task be accurate based on projected completion date of the dependency? Sure. So it's, it'll be just like um, if you're in GuideStick itself in the uh, UI and you want to mark a task uh, done, then um, any tasks below it that are dependent there, they would have an updated start and due date. So it's just um, just the same as if you were in the UI. Perfect. All right. So um, let's talk about notes. So uh, notes are a very popular feature of uh, GuideCX. And what I've shown here is a screenshot of, I'm in a project and I've opened up a, a task called verify user information. And I've gone over to the notes tab. So we have two users that are um, sending messages back to each other on this task. So the first user has um, used the traditional at mentioning capability that's been in GuideCX forever. So they're at mentioning um, another user on the team. That person is going to receive a notification. They're going to receive an email saying, oh, hey, you've been mentioned on this project. Here's the what that uh, message is. But then notice the uh, response here is a little different. So response is taking advantage of a feature that uh, we implemented using a recipe. So what you can do with this recipe is if you add a hashtag, pound slack, a colon, followed by the nickname you've defined for a user, well, then this message is going to be triggered by a uh, trigger recipe. The recipe is going to not only send the message to um, the user as normal, but also it's going to send it over to uh, their uh, DM channel in Slack. So you notice here in Slack, uh, the recipient will get a message. It'll say, here's the, the name of the task. It'll say who sent the message. It'll say the contents of the message. And at the top here, we have in blue, the title of the Slack message says that it's a task note from a GuideCX project and it says what the project uh, name itself is. And if uh, the recipient were to click on this, it would take them right into GuideCX, open up the task and right on the notes tab, and they'd be able to see the entire um, conversation about that task. And then the final example I wanted to show you about is um, how you can use forms to customize your um, onboarding experience for your customer. So let's say you have a, a project here where you see the first task is called onboarding survey and it's assigned to a customer. So in this task, um, you're gonna send them a link to a form that they'll fill out and it's going to make customizations to the project by updating tasks and so forth. So when uh, this task goes live, your customer's gonna get a task assignment and here they're viewing the task assignment on our mobile app. 
which is terrific, by the way. You should check it out. So it's saying, um, hi, Charles, please fill out this form and uh, we'll get your project going. So here's a link to the form. So when they then go um, click on that link to get to the form, what you'll see is a Google form that you've created and customized to your needs. So certain information on the form can be automatically populated, such as the customer's email, the project ID, and then it asks them any questions that you think are relevant. Uh, in this case, it's asking, do you want to use white labeling um, emails? And then if they say yes or no, then what's going to happen is when they submit the form, the recipe is going to do a variety of magic. So first off, it can automatically update the task done, the one that we just asked the customer to fill out the form. The customer doesn't even have to do that. The uh, recipe is going to mark that task done for them. Also, based upon the answers, it's going to know, well, which tasks in this project are no longer applicable. Like, oh, in this case, it's marked this task domain authorization as not applicable because of the answers that were given on the form. And then finally, all of the um, answers from the form can be sent to the project notes so that you have a record of everything. So now your customer has a customized experience and your project manager never had to go and manually read through the um, form and the submission and make all of these adjustments in Guide CX. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Stacey. Yeah, that's awesome, Jeff. Uh, we have a couple questions for you. So going back to that uh, Slack recipe that you showed, uh, the question is, would you set up a channel or would it work with a direct message with multiple people? Uh, for example, everyone on the project team for that project. Uh, it should work for any channel because the, the recipe that I created to do this uh, just looks for a channel ID. So you would go into Slack and you would just... Um, find the channel ID for that channel, and then you would go and enter in the recipe. So the recipe itself will say um, each nickname and what the channel ID is for that person. And it could be um, a group channel as well. Awesome. Uh, for Google Forms, can it also update fields in the project details? Update fields in the project details? Well, so it would be able to do things like if I'm interpreting the question right, you could change the status of the project. You could change the plan date of the project. You could even change the project manager. Um, so you can update, a recipe can update a variety of details about the project. Um, it can update uh, tasks, you can create tasks um, and um, you know even do things like uh, uh, create notes. Awesome. Guys, if you have any other questions, oh, here's one other from Janet. Are forms always linked to Google Forms? Now, we use an example here with, with Google Forms, but um, you could use a variety of um, third-party form services. We've used uh, Formstack, for example, in the past. But um, it's just an example of how uh, when you would go, you'd go look to see, does is there a connector for the form service you would like? And then that's going to make it a whole lot easier. So there's a Google form connector and that allows the recipe to detect that a Google form submission has been um, entered. Awesome. Thanks, Janet. That's a great question. Uh, another question, I think for you, Jeff, from David, he said, would the recipe builder allow us to pass documents between Jira and GuideCX? Um, you would not be able to upload an attachment to GuideCX per se. Um, uh, currently, so because um, that's you, one way you can think about what Recipe Builder can do is um, it makes it very easy to implement um, things that previously only could be done via our API. So the connectors in Recipe Builder make it very easy to do a lot of things like creating tasks, updating tasks. If you find that there's something in a connector that's not possible, you can, as was mentioned earlier, utilize our API from within a recipe. We make it pretty easy to do that. And, um, but then uh, right now, updating or uploading attachments is not one of the um, actual features available. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, and Sage has a question as well. Anyone can take this to money, perhaps you talking about connectors. If there is no connector for the service we use, how do we request adding that? So, with the with the connectors if it's not if there is no connector used there are other various ways that you can connect um, or be able to ingest that data one one example is a webhook so instead of using a uh, instead of using a connector 
you would use a webhook as your trigger in your recipe. Um, and then you would, you, it produces a URL that you can put in your system if there's a capability there. That way you can funnel all that information into your recipe to follow the actions that you have. Great, thanks. I think that is all the questions and we are a little bit over time. Sorry about that, but we really appreciate you guys engaging. Uh, with today's webinar. We appreciate you being customers. We hope you are just as excited about us, uh, as excited as we are about the recipe builder. It really does unlock that full flexibility to take those pre-built integrations and customize to build recipes from scratch to any system, and then also adjust those workflows within GuideCX. Uh, our next office hours webinar is April 25th at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And so we hope we will see you back here again. And thanks for joining us. Okay.